Good morning, YouTube. It is 4.09 on this Wednesday. Um, today's topic is... Uh, <sighs> uh, Re-entry blackout. <laughs> Way too early. Or that Higgs the chromosomes space the electrons like the magnetism of particles and momentum of receptors radiation are mathematic a solution asteroid what am I doing up um so what is reentry blackout uh whenever a space vehicle goes into space and decides to come back down to earth uh Coming back down to Earth is called re-entry. Um, and actually, this actually happens anytime a space capsule enters uh, um, an atmosphere. Uh, so it doesn't have to be Earth. But since we live on Earth, uh, we think about Earth most often uh, and spacecraft coming back down to Earth. Uh, anytime it does that, it, it uh, it comes back at a speed at about five times the speed of sound, uh, which is pretty fast. Um, uh, most of the time. <sighs> oh, and then so as as the spacecraft is re-entering, uh, there's a period of time where it loses communication with uh, our ground our ground units, uh, and that's you know, that's a uh, so that's a communications blackout. Uh, upon re-entry, that's what I'm talking about when I say re-entry blackout. So um, now as I grew up, I didn't really think about it too much and just assumed that, well, it's coming back down to earth, it's super hot, it's fiery, the fire burns off the antenna, therefore communications blackout. But um, I would always forget the fact that once the capsule was back on earth, uh, signal was reacquired <laughs> and they're talking to each other again on the radio so um, that can't happen if the antenna burns off so uh, the antenna is not burning off uh, what's going on here so what's going on is when when the capsule comes back through the atmosphere um, because it's going so fast it collects a layer of plasma uh, a layer of ionized gas uh, what is plasma again it's um, Plasma is a fourth state of matter, a solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and plasma has so much energy that um, the electrons are stripped away from the atom, from the nuclei, and so you have free-floating electrons and free-floating nuclei, and those are ionized. So plasma is a really hot ionized gas, and that layer is wrapped around the capsule, and that plasma interferes with the communication signal. Uh, and it can last about three to four minutes depending on um, r really it's it depends on the the existence of that plasma layer depends on um, your re-entry trajectory and how fast you're going and, and stuff like that so now there's there's a, a small window range of, of re-entry um, uh, parameters uh, because if you go, if you if you come back into Earth too shallow, you bounce off the atmosphere. If you come in too quickly, you, you're too hot and you burn the capsule. Uh, so your angle is pretty well defined, um, and your speed is pretty well defined. Uh, there's been some variation in the spacecraft between the various missions that have gone out and come back in. Uh, and so you have communication blackouts that vary between three to five minutes or so. Um, now, you can resolve this somehow. Oh, and so we'll get to the space shuttle. Some people think that the space shuttle goes so slow that it didn't have a communication blackout, but that's not true. It did have its own communication blackout uh, because it, it would also collect ionized gas. Um, and its blackout used to last 30 minutes until they uh, they found a way around it and so one of the ways you can solve it is because of the shape of of the space shuttle 
there are certain windows on the shape of the shuttle where the ionized gas doesn't wrap around and so if you put a certain antenna in a certain spot um, you don't lose communication and for the space shuttle it was at the tail uh, and so when they found this out they added an antenna to the tail and they were able to keep communication throughout reentry. Um, you couldn't do that with like the Apollo missions or any of those things because of the shape the, the whole thing would just wrap around would be wrapped by the plasma so uh, let's see just recently those scientists in China have figured out that there's another way of getting around this ionized gas um, and so when I read the article, I have to confess, um, when I took electrical engineering back in college, it was not my best subject. <laughs> uh, electrical engineering is one of those, you know, I had to take it because of my degree, but honestly, uh, you know, I, okay, so I can understand resistance, uh, V equals IR, voltage, resistance, and, um, and uh, um, see even now that you know the circuitry is one of those weird things that for whatever reason I cannot wrap my head around and so um, when the article starts talking about um, capacitance and inductance uh, sure whatever you say <laughs> I'll take your word for it and so what this article that I read talks about is that if if you have the surface of the craft well, like this and you have your ionized layer um, if you can create a layer in between that does capacitance and therefore forcing inductance on the plasma you create sort of this resonance between the two and effectively you utilize the plasma uh, to create another circuit so again, it's circuitry, it's, it's electrical engineering, it's a foreign language to me, but basically what they're doing is um, you manipulate you manipulate something and you utilize the plasma, um, you, you match the plasma basically in, in terms of um, electrical characteristics and therefore instead of um, instead of it being a barrier and a source of interference you you match its its characteristics so that you actually use it as a as an extension of your antenna basically um, see I can think of this better as as waves and interference of waves if you have a wave and you have a, a wave that's opposite then they uh, counteract each other that's uh, um, I'm thinking that's the same as, you know, impedance here, but um, if you can match those waves, then they sort of help each other and you can just kind of move across it and it's not a barrier anymore. So, um, so they figured this out and uh, they're trying to figure out if they can utilize this for future spacecraft so you don't have any kind of uh, reentry blackout. Because again, that ionized gas will block the if you're not if you're not matching its characteristics it'll block it'll block the um, the uh, the radio signal that you're trying to get across so um, so there you go there I'm gonna leave it at that again circuitry is just uh, I don't get it sometimes but um, it's kind of cool that we can uh, understand the physical nature of this plasma and and try and match its characteristics in such a way that it doesn't become a hindrance it actually becomes just an extension so uh we'll, we'll see if uh, because we you know we we still have vehicles flying up and coming back down re-entry um you know and we will for a long long time until we figure out any gravity or something like that so okay i gotta head into work you gotta go do whatever it is you do uh we'll talk to you tomorrow